The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the February 12th, the magical Monday edition of today's Trader Zed Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. And let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us. Not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I are going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what the bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here, but even more important than that, and that's this, during this next 53 minutes, I am here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. Would love to hear from you. 877-927-6648 is the number. If you've got a question but you can't call in, we've got your back. Just send an email off to steve at tfnn.com. Inside that subject heading, if you'd be kind enough to put radio show question. Of course, if you're inside our Tigers Den, well, then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on marvelous, magnificent Monday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. We got a sea of green out there right now. You got all the U.S. indices that we track trading at the upside. Dow's up 105, S&P 9, NASDAQ 131, Russell's up 31, Sox, the semis are up 60 points. Randy's right now up five points. You've got gold trading down 11 bucks and change. Silver's up 13 pennies. Lights recruit is off 21 cents. Natural gas is down two pennies. 30 year treasure's off four ticks. She's printed out at 119.16. You know what I want to do today because I made this individual wait an entire weekend is uh, to uh, didn't get to one request that came in on uh, Friday and that was uh, Brent and he was uh, asking about natural gas so what I'm going to do we're in our black background charts right now we're going to stay with those and uh, his question like many of us is, is looking for a bottom so let's uh, take a look at this set of charts here so as I can find where I put that set of charts should be like right here where there we go Taz there we go Okay, so what I have here is actually the left-hand left side is the March contract. That's active for the next few days out here. Um, but when I've got my other charts, they're all the continuous contracts out here. So that's the only way for me to be able to go back. And Brett's real initial question is, you know, what's the next target area that we're looking at for price to get to where, you know, maybe we're going to explore bottom. So we take a look at the daily set of time frame charts out here. And you'll see when we switch over to our other daily charts for natural gas, we don't have any kind of a bottom pattern or signal that is present at the moment. I do have a small A to B equals CD pattern that's drawn out here. That's got a price projection of about a buck sixty-two. I've also drawn the expansion of its last set of daily swing points out there. That would be the low from December 13th all the way to the high of January 9th. The 1.618 expansion is 1.67. So I would say based upon the daily chart, the likely logical price target is in that 161-ish type area out there, 161, 162. Now, if we move over to a weekly time frame chart, what I've identified is the most recent swing point that this could be going after. This takes us back into June 15th of 2020, the week that began there. Whoops, I'm sorry. Uh, make sure I had the right date. That Yes, yeah, I'm sorry. June 22nd. Yeah, June 22nd of 2020. That low out there is at a buck 43. The high is 1.71. We haven't got down there just yet, but that is a likely price target. I've also drawn in an A to B equals CD pattern. Now, the one-to-one -one A to B equals CD pattern has already been attained. If I can draw this pattern in on a weekly time frame, I can most certainly draw this in on a daily time frame. So, Brent, the other thing about this daily chart out here, the one on the left, even though I've drawn in on a smaller A to B equals CD, if you were to see a bullish reversal candle, that could be the sign 
uh, of at least a buy the D point pattern. Might not be the small one that we're looking at, but most certainly could be the one on the weekly time frame. And I'm not saying that we need to have a weekly bullish reversal candle, although that would be nice to have out there. I'm just using this in the kind of the, the look of the different A to B equals CD patterns that are out there. Now, if we switch over and look at a monthly time frame chart, you can see that we're already trading into a monthly swing point that takes us at, at, at which is uh, anything below 1.875. And this suggests there are two swing points. Let me, in fact, just open up this chart. It'll be easier to see. The one is basically the most recent one that we were, in essence, looking at out here. That was from June of 2020. And that's at a buck. Uh, that's at a buck uh, 43. So that's the lowest one. If we go all the way back into the 2000 and 1999 time frame, how about that? If we go back to March of 1999 or February of 1999, we're going to see that uh, we've got a buck 62 to a buck 87. So we're trading in a number of different swing points as we speak. So those are areas to be watching as well. That was on the monthly time frame. The quarterly time frame has got a buck 62 and a buck 43. So I just wanted to at least establish that with regard to these charts and share that with you before I switch over to take a look at the natural gas charts, which I'm going to do here momentarily. Let me get that queued up. We'll get the natural gas charts up first, and I'm going to change screens. We'll have our multi-time frame set of screens up here as we take a look at natural gas. Just to, again, show you, share with you what the current signals are. You'll see on a monthly time frame, there's no signal whatsoever. We're in bar number six on the way down. We're below a breakout level. Originally, last week, we were looking at uh, the potential, hopefully, of a bullish reversal candle would confirm the Rhodes momentum indicator signal. Well, that pattern has since gone away. In other words, there is more relative weakness than there was back on the trading session of uh, the week of, I should say, the week that ended December the 22nd out there. So that no longer is a pattern option. Only bar number five on the daily time frame for natural gas. So that's not a bottom pattern out here either. So I think we've got to be patient on the daily time frame, bar number six. So you could see a TD9 count bottom between Wednesday and uh, Friday out here. Oh, I'm sorry, we're bar number, bar number five today. Yeah, so it could be the end of the week to early next week out there. So, Brent, I think we just need to stay patient here with regard to natural gas. And thanks so much for our, say thanks for taking so much time uh, to uh, wait for that answer. I do hope that that provided the info that you're looking for. And if not, you know how to get in touch with me. Uh, as long as I'm here, I've got about a minute before we go to the hard break. There was a request that came in from Duncan Steve to take a look at ASPN. So let's go ahead and do that. Get that off of the. Uh, off of the to-do list. Now, I would like more to-do stuff out there, so don't hesitate to uh, make some requests. But we take a look at ASPN. That's what you should be seeing on your screen right now. Let me double check. Yep, there we go. So we take a look at this instrument. What do we know? We know that this formed and completed a TD9 count bottom pattern. It can, this is a daily time frame, by the way, that we're taking a look at for Aspen Aerogel. So it completed that beautiful TD9 count bottom. It completed the wave number seven bottom, and it took price really right up to where it should have taken it, which is its TD9 count breakdown level. And the exact price there looks like 1261 or four. I'm gonna give you the exact number. It was 1264. If price were to close above 1264, uh, Duncan, then this is telling you that you've got a, you definitely have a change in trend out here, at least for the daily time frame. And this next upside target would be 1607. So now let's take that information, look at the weekly time frame chart. The weekly time frame chart shows you're trading above its green oscillator and change line. That is a bullish outcome. As long as price remains above that, that tells you it wants to uh, rally out there. So looks like uh, everything looks good. You're up against resistance. You'd love to see it close about 1264. You don't have to get that today. So Duncan, I hope that helps you out with regard to Aspen Aerogels. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. 
for daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call Newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call Newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Back up, folks. We've got the uh, all the USNCs trading the upside. Dow's up 137, SP 11, NASDAQ's up 37, and the Russell's up 33. We're going to talk about the NASDAQ with John in Philly. John, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you this morning? Steve, I'm doing great. Uh, thanks for taking the call and indulging me in the di discussion of this uh, bull market rally phase in the NASDAQ 100. Absolutely. So, uh, Steve, um, you and I uh, know each other very well 10 years now. And uh, one thing that um, uh, one characteristic that you and I share is that uh, we are voracious indulgers of other people's discoveries. Sure. So we've looked around for uh, people who've come before us who've come up with discoveries and tools to apply to the markets, uh, all with the goal of improving our trading performance. Absolutely. And um, uh, you and I both, the likes of which have uh, studied Tommy DeMarc's work uh, in detail, uh, Marty Armstrong's work, and uh, last but not least, of course, the work of uh, Larry Pesavento Beza, Basil Chapman, Tom O'Brien, and uh, and everybody else. Absolutely. But um, Steve, um, in in that vein, um, I've been asking myself the question for a couple of weeks now: um, How far can this bull phase extend? And, and keeping in mind, uh, kind of as a background, things that we've been working with now for months. Uh, I should give kudos and credits to both Tim Ord and Stan Harley, who both correctly anticipated that to October uh, corrective pullback in the stock market. And then almost, in, that, in fact, both men actually nailed within a day the bottom back on October 27th of that pullback low and the subsequent rally. And, you know, in the context of uh, just reiterating 
the conclusions coming from the work of those two men, uh, both uh, are anticipating the rally that we're currently in to extend higher for more time. And uh, how much higher and how much longer, of course, is ill-defined. But uh, so we're all now that. But with all that as background, Steve, I'm asking myself the question, is what we're seeing in the NASDAQ 100 what Marty Armstrong uh, coined, coined the phrase describing uh, rare rallies as phase transition rallies, rallies that go to extremes and go further and higher than just about anybody uh, thought possible. Uh, I will just mention by way of history uh, for those market students uh, who are interested, one can look at four phase transition bull market tops that come to my mind. One was the 1989 top in the Japanese stock market. Uh, second was the 2000 in the NASDAQ 100. Uh, the 2011 top in the price of silver. And I believe it was also 2011 where there was a bull market rally top in the price of cotton. And in each one of those four, uh, long-term bull markets were well underway. But the final stages of the rallies and those, and the final stages took variable amounts of time, sometimes as long as a year, sometimes just a couple of months. But sure. in each of those four cases I mentioned, the phase transition, bull market rally phase to cap the bull markets literally doubled in its stages and quickly. Um, and uh, I am not forecasting by any means that the NASDAQ 100 will do that today or is amidst that, but I'm asking the question, is this possible, and are we dealing with that? Sure. And um, so uh, that is the question I'm asking, uh, and I've got uh, just a couple quick, easy uh, things to share to help us try to navigate, excuse me, navigate, four things to help us answer the question uh, as we move forward. Uh, is this, in fact, what we're dealing with or not? Sure, so sure. Um, so let's uh, this that's first. what I'm uh, here to share. Before okay. I do that, I'll just uh, open the floor to you and uh, ask if there's anything you'd like me to uh, address or anything you'd like to add. No, yeah, so let me add a couple of things. So one, we anticipated we anticipated this call. John sent an email to me, I think it might have been on Saturday, Friday or Saturday, just asking if we could, you know, if I'd be open to discussing the phase transition process. And the answer to that was yes. But for many people, this is a new concept or what have you. So what I did was I just simply put together a simple chart so everybody can follow along, take a look what we have here. So a phase transition, I mean, I'm going to use the simple thing like water that probably is on each of our tables right now. And water can go through a phase transition. So if we take a look at it, I've got, I love ice cubes. I've got ice in my glass. If I were to put ice into a beaker and underneath that put a, a little Bunsen burner, what have you, obviously that would go from a solid and it would start to melt. And that melting time period is going to take, you know, depending on, how, on the heat or what have you, you know, going to take time while it's melting. It's kind of creating this little spring. And that spring, as it's melting, then it's going to turn to liquid. And then we know it's going to boil for a while, and it's going to create a spring. And then it's going to create a gas. So these are, these are really what are referred to as phase transitions. Now, the point of this is that every phase, so John's asking the question. That's a great question. I'm asking the question myself. Are we in a phase transition? The first thing we have to determine is, does it, does it contain the characteristic that we're looking at? And that characteristic is this coiled or melting area, so to speak, where we basically have a consolidating market. So the summary of this slide is that every phase transition must have a consolidation. That's what part of the definition. So John had mentioned the 2000 top. And John, I think there might have been one more phase transition. I think that the uh, run up in gold in 1980, what was it? 1980, 79, 80, 81? No, it was, 19, it was Jan January 19, uh, January 1980, yes. 
Yeah. Okay. So I think that was a, one, an additional one. But here, if we take a look at the Dow, because this is, so I've got a yearly chart so that people could truly see the actual phase there. And then, no, so one of the other things that we had in common in the 2000 run up was we had global capital that was flowing into the U.S. So, and it was primarily the euro. It was mostly Europe, European capital was flowing into the U.S. But here is that base that we have inside the phase transition. So the first question I think that we have to ask ourselves with regard to the NDX 100 is, is there a time period in here that we can consider to be that basing out aspect? Doesn't mean that the market can't take off. I mean, it could be one of Marty's other um, uh, two or three you know, ways that he looks at, at a market, like a slingshot, or it could be a plateau move out there. But you and I, we're gonna concentrate on the phase transition. I wanted to share with everybody what the basic principles of a phase transition are. And so we come back to this break, maybe you can identify help us identify what would be that coiling period here to uh, assist us in the NDX, in fact, moving into a phase transition process. Steve Rose with TFNN. We'll be right back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, uh, folks. We're out live with John in Philly. We're taking a look at the NASDAQ 100. That first discussion was really about phase transitions. You know, what I don't know, John, and the first question I would pose to you is uh, knowing that there's got to be a base that's driven. Have you? Uh, the only thing I've been able to identify, maybe that could be a base, and I don't even know if it's a long enough period of time out here. 
uh, is what I've got drawn on the uh, screen inside this rectangular area. This is a weekly chart, folks, that we're taking a look at out here. Please get that cursor to work, which really runs from about May of 2023. And the breakout, you could say, was probably right around December of 2023. So is that enough of a consolidation or is the phase that we're in? The other thing to consider, John, is this just what Martin would refer to as a slingshot move, what I refer to as a roads momentum indicator, where it's really not the first low that matters. It's how the next lows that matter form out there. And if they're forming with less relative strength, kind of like a ball, folks, that you'd if you're inside the pool and you put between your legs, you're trying to push down. Eventually, that ball is going to simply slip and it's going to come shooting out. And that's really the slingshot move, which will always get us back to or typically is supposed to get us back to the recent highs. So the recent highs for it would have been back in in November as I take a look. So I know I've, I've thrown out a few things to you as well, uh, but just to consider, you know, in in your dialogue. So I throw that out there as I, you know, as we try to interpret this, is this just a slingshot move that we've got or is this a phase transition uh, that we're in? And so now I, I open up the floor back to you. Uh, Steve, uh, you've just asked some very appropriate questions. Uh, let me try to limit what I have to say in two minutes. That's it. Make it as simple and as clear as I possibly can, because you know me, I'm a starter, and uh, I very much uh, empathize with the, uh, uh, the work of Larry Pesavento keep things as simple as possible. Uh, I'm not a forecaster. I'm a trader. I'm looking to be profitable. And first and foremost, always, always, always limit my risk when I'm wrong, because I'm going to be wrong lots. But phase um, transition is just a term. You don't hear many people, including myself, talk about it often because they are rare. The question sure. is, are we dealing with something like that? Uh, we may well be. Uh, I will never come out and admit to myself it's yes or no. I just want to know what trade can I take to capitalize upon it and where can I act where uh, I can limit my uh, risk when I'm wrong in case this is not occurring. And just to tell you the... Um, uh, the conclusion I had come to after studying this for decades now is this idea of phase transition merely or simply stated in English refers to a maturing bull market that in its final stages doubles or something like that, you know, doubles, sure. triples, up 50, 70, something big, something just out of left field. And what, um, what is uh, symptomatic of every market in history that has followed this sort of uh, example, and Nikkei in 89, NASDAQ 2000, gold in 80, cotton and silver in 2011, there's many more over the years, is that the pace of increase of rally, pace of rally accelerates, 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 until a top is formed. And the way that we can visualize that acceleration simply and clearly is to take the price chart, you know, daily or weekly, and instead of plotting it on linear scale, plot it on logarithmic scale. And on logarithmic scale, a straight line on a log chart is in fact an exponentially rising trend. So it's easy to look at that. And what I did in the Tiger's Den 15 minutes ago was post the NASDAQ 100 log chart, yeah, log chart only, in which I it. just connected lows to make rising trend lines. And I did three separate rising trend lines, each more, each steeper than the other. And that one can merely see, okay, fine, we're in, a, we're in a state right here, right now, since January 18th, when we decisively cleared that November 2021 top, I think we're 16,800 or so. Uh, the lows have been, or the, uh, yes, the trend lines off lows have been, uh, rising in steepness. 
And from a trader's perspective, trying to ask this question, are we in a phase transition? The operative rule, the clear, the easy and simple technique to answer that question is to observe every pullback. And do we, in fact, hold trend line support on each successively steeper trend line? So that is what I am doing. That's my, you know, I'd ask the question, how do we tell, what, you know, when do we act? Sure. It's drawing the trend lines off off lows using the NDX daily chart log plots. Not the linear plot, the log plot. That's the key. Um, so uh, I uh, share that with you. That's what I will be watching just from a trader's perspective, I am not shorting this market. I'll scalp short from time to time. Uh, the most recent uh, test of a rising trend line on the log plot was uh, just two weeks ago. And, you know, you're just looking at today's action. And we all just, as human beings, will marvel, holy cow, this price advance, you know, literally in the past 60 minutes, it's breathtaking. And it's, if it is a phase transition, it's going to go on for a while, and it's going to continue to be breathtaking until it ends. Uh, so yeah. I just uh, thought it'd be worthwhile sharing that today, and we can all monitor this together. No, absolutely. Hey, John, uh, thanks for the call, as always, and the conversation. And uh, we'll continue this conversation over the coming uh, weeks and months. Uh, for sure. So I, I really do appreciate that. I know everybody else appreciates uh, everything that you've shared. So uh, is there anything else? Is there anything that I can do for you? Anything? Uh, my pleasure uh, doing this, Steve. Uh, no, you you always answer my questions. So uh, so thank you and uh, be you in bet. touch. You bet. Thank you. That was John in Philly. And the charts I've got up on my screen before we go to our next caller out here. Uh, these are the charts for the S&P 500. Uh, and the S&P 500 plotted in all of the other major currencies. So one of the other characteristics of whether it's a phase transition, whether it's a slingshot type of a move out there, is you'll see the market, whatever it is that you're tracking, uh, trading higher in all the major currencies. We're at new all-time highs today inside the S&P in U.S. dollars, in euros, in yen, in Great British Pound, in Aussie dollars, in Swedish Corona. This morning, just a few minutes ago, the Swiss franc just kicked in. It's now at a new all-time high out there. So we've got a worldwide, you know, I've been talking about the worldwide uh, rally since really the beginning of the year, since we came in and started taking a look at how the markets were moving out there. So we'll get back from this uh, break out there. And if we still have our caller that waited, I hope that uh, he did. We'll go out to him and uh, we'll be right back. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. 
First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large-cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction Leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold. Traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Uh, folks, let's go out to California and speak with Garo. Garo, thank you so much for holding through that entire segment out there. Greatly appreciate it. How are you today? Uh, very good, sir. How about you? I, I'm doing very well. Condolences if you're a, a San Francisco 49ers fan, which I, I would assume you are. But... <laughs> Not so... care less. Believe me. I don't watch football. I uh... only watch the stock market. That's I all. love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Well, <laughs> uh, we're get, we're going to watch the stock market with you today by taking a look at C4 Therapeutics. CCCC is the ticker symbol. I'm guessing you're long here. Yes, sir. Yesterday I bought it at five seventy five, five dollars seventy five on the daily chart. Yes. Where the candle hit the dot. At I that, that point, I bought it at five seventy five. I have five thousand shares of it. And I have it. I, my question is that from you, sir. Uh, will that thing, you think it will get to that 830 and it will break out from there or uh, this is a short play? So I, I would answer your, your question two different ways just by taking a look at my tools. And I'm going to switch away from your charts. By the way, folks, uh, Garo is, a, uh, is the master, the expert, the genius at using uh, the, para the parabolic SAR program. Those are the dots that he refers to, as well as primarily four uh, moving averages, I believe, the 5, the 21, the 50, and the 200 out there. So great set of tools. But to answer your specific question, what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch over to my white background screens so that that way you can at least see or understand what it is that I'm coming up with as far as price targets. Now, what we're seeing today is prices trying to take out resistance. For me, resistance would be the top of its daily profile. And the sellers are sitting at $6.39. They're not doing a very good job, which is what you want to see out there. And you'd love to see a close above that. If you see a close above that, then from my perspective, on a daily time frame, price will be above two different resistance levels. One would be the top of the profile, and the second would be this green oscillator and change line. When you're above a green oscillator and change line, tells us for that time frame, we have a rising price oscillator above zero. Those are bullish conditions. Therefore, in this case here, we're in what I would term kind of a breakout bull mode on the daily time frame. And that would then suggest that price moves up to its next resistance level. Normally, somebody would have, like myself, would have selected the top of that swing point out there. But here we have, I use this TD9 count system, and that identifies objectively where price is really broken out from and where it's broken down from. So the next upside price target that I'll be watching, I'm not saying this where price stops, would be 753. If price can get above 753, then I'd say we get to that 842 level out there. So I'm just identifying the next area of resistance that I see right now. Support would have to be that 639 area, uh, the top of the profile, or 631 even, which is where that uh, green asset and change line is printing right now. So the daily looks like it absolutely wants higher price, at least at 1145 in the morning. The weekly is saying the same thing. So you've got a battle at 753. You clear that battle, you're up to 842. Now, how is that for an answer? I don't know if it's the right answer, but it's an answer. 
I love that. I love it very much. Very, very, that's very good. That's what I was thinking of according to my charts that I have from Warden Brothers. It's exactly the same numbers. Same, same numbers. Uh, I follow the same thing on TNA yep. and PATH. P-A-T-H. If you look yep. at PATH, you'll see that I bought it on, uh, on February the 8th, uh, the same way on daily chart when the candle hit that uh, upper dot. Uh, so I have it, and so. But uh, my my last question, uh, Steve, sure. uh, regarding AMD, AMD, AMD. I- I'm waiting for that to hit the uh, to hit one seventy eight forty seven. Uh once one. Uh, oh, give me that ticker symbol again. If I, I must. Start AMD. A- App- Apple Mary David. Apple Mary David. AMD. Ah, AMD. Sorry, my fault. Uh, a little bit of a, <laughs> little bit of a brain issue, you know. After last night's game, I'm just kidding. Okay, so I've got AMD. So you're you're waiting. Are you are you looking to short this? Is that what you're thinking? No, no, no. I want to go long on one seventy eight forty seven. Okay, so I, I see that parabolic star that you're looking at. I'm going to switch my screen so that you can see it. I'm going to be on my version of Garo's screen out there, and then you'll understand why I'm about to say what I'm going to say out there. So I'd like everybody to follow along. And that is the only issue you have with that. So what, what Garo's waiting for, folks, if you can see on our screen, our dots are off just a little bit by dollar-wise, but not a big deal there. I've got 178.05. And the thought process is once price hits that, then that could, could trigger you into a, a long position. Garo has a set of formulas where he looks at some intraday charts and so forth. But here's what I wanted to share with you at this point, Garo, is the top of yes, the weekly sir. profile. Top of the weekly profile is 179.80, so that's where sellers reside. No idea whether they, you know, they'll get taken out or not, um, but just know that if you were to take that trade, you definitely have potential resistance at 179.80. So I just wanted to be able to pass pass that on to you, just to consider as you're taking a look at your work out there. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you, uh, my, Steve. We love you. My, Thank you, my sir. pleasure. You, you bet. No, it's uh, great to hear from you. Thanks so much for holding. You make my day. So I got you guys, but John and you, Mr. Z and you, made, it get, doesn't get much better than that. So <laughs> thanks again, girl. Um, all right, so we do have a couple of questions that came in. So let me go to those out here. For that, I'm going to have to switch screens. So I'm sure that's not going to be a problem. I just need to make sure that I do it. And we're going to take a look at two ticker symbols. One is a uh, symbol XPEV. Um, that is, I believe, that's a Chinese EV entity out here. Always hard to make a call on what this is doing. Again, we'll go with our call out here, and that is that you can't really pay attention to the daily time frame. The reason I say that is because it's uh, filled with all kinds of gaps. That was all, all currency-related. So when we take a look at this here, um, uh, then I just go to the weekly chart. A little bit less noise out there. You've got the beautiful TD9 count that has taken uh, hold out here. We're trading right now above last week's high. When I look at the weekly time frame chart, that's a bullish signal. So XPEV should go target the 1135 area. I say 1135 area because that's the oscillator and change on. That number's going to change up or down as price moves up or down. Above that, you've got resistance as well at 1244. Now, the next resistance level on a daily time frame for this instrument is basically between where it's trading right now. And what I mean by that is between 8.91 and 9.36. This is a bearish structured, a slightly bearish structured profile there. Now, if price can clear 9.36, then you're on your way to 10.48. So the progression and the calls here with regard to XPEV, you got a battle as you speak right now at this 8.91 level. The next battle is 9.36. Next battle above that would be 10.48. And above that, somewhere between 11.35 and 12.44. So that's what we see when we take a look at XPEV out there. Let's go to our next request, which was uh, from Dan inside the Tiger's Den. And Dan wanted to take a look at SVRA out there. So we take a look at Savra, I believe, is that, that is Savara out here. What we can see on a daily time frame is uh, you've got a Roach Mintum indicator top that was triggered a couple of weeks ago with that bearish shooting star candle that was on the trading session of January 30th. That has led to nothing more than a consolidation with inside the profile. So we know that there's strong support, Dan, at 471. We also know that there's strong resistance at 517, or really you could also say at the top that shooting star. So between 517 and 529, it's just simply loaded with uh, bullets, uh, sellers up there. Now, what price should do, if the day can close above 496, you're at 501. If price can close above 
496 today. That should at least get you back up to the 517 area. The weekly chart is an all out, uh, oh, I take that back. The weekly chart has a TD9 count top. So what you'd really love to see take place this week, you'd love to see price close above 497. You close above 497, the weekly chart is in full out, blown, bullish mode. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, uh, folks. Uh, Marvell is one of the requests out here. We've got a good old-fashioned consolidation with inside its uh, bullish structure daily profile. I take that back. It's trying to break out of that bullish structure daily profile. Close above 71.59 today. We'll accomplish that. So I would say if you see a close above 71.59 in Marvell, it should get up to its breakdown level. That's at 73.53. A price close above 73.53 is uh, going to suggest that we head to higher ground out there. Now, if this does take out, uh, you're in the bar following bar number nine on the weekly time frame. It's got a road momentum indicator top out there. That's led to a bit of a pullback, but not much of a pullback. Nonetheless, a uh, tick this week above 73.53 would also trigger a weekly uh, TD nine count topping pattern. On a monthly basis, we could see Marvell is back at resistance at 73 bucks even Steven, this TD nine count breakdown area. So I would say that you're really looking for a close above 73.53, uh, just simply and looking at the uh, traffic signals out here. It looks like you're headed into a bunch of resistance out there inside of ticker symbol MRVL. The next request was to take a look at that uh, really was Nugget, but was really uh, where to buy the Nugget. And so I thought we'd put up the GDX instead. 
So I'm looking to see if there's any kind of pattern out here. And I do not have any kind of a buy signal pattern. Inside the GDX, what we have is price trading below profile support and a red oscillator and change line. That says that uh, price could get down to the 2626 level. That's the next area of where price had broken out from uh, inside the GDX. So not until you get that bottom of the GDX would I step into a long position inside of uh, a nugget out there. Uh, the last request, I think we get this squeezed in, was to take a look at SoFi. So we take a look at SoFi out here. SoFi is uh, trading above. It's trying to do a profile change in trend signal out here, Greg. And uh, that would uh, require simply a close above 825. If it closed above 825 today, this would be signaling to you and I that price wants to get back towards its recent highs. We can see those recent highs out there took place on January 29th. Uh, that was at a price point. It got up to a high of a 945. However, we can see at 891, that's going to get you into the weekly profile uh, level of uh, potential resistance out there. So it looks to me like what SoFi wants to do is move up to that 891 level. <laughs> Folks, thanks so much for uh, being with me today. Thank you, uh, Mr. Z, John inside the Tiger Zen, Garo for the call. Always love that. And uh, I'll be back with Tom at uh, 315 or so, and we'll look forward to seeing you tomorrow on Perfect Tuesday. Have a magical Monday, folks. Take care.